Welcome back to the Professor's Lab. I'm Professor V, and this is round three, the final round of the league tournament that happened at Die Hard Games on August 8th, 2024. If you didn't know, Die Hard League happens every Thursday at 6 p.m. Central, featuring casual and tournament play of whatever format everyone wants. More info in the description. Stellar Crown pre-releases start Saturday, August 31st, 1 p.m. Central at Die Hard Games. And check out Pokemon's event locator for premiere and other events at the shop, such as League Challenges, League Cups, pre-releases, and more. Please hit that like button right quick, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, say what you need to say in the comments, and all that other good free stuff. But anyways, let's research this game. Lugia vs. Ancient. Weird Ear V started in the active spot for our Lugia player, who is going to start things off for us this round. Bench in a Lugia V. That's good. Now let's see if we can get any Archaeops in the discard pile. Two is ideal, but we'll take one. Looks like our player has an interesting hand to deal with here as they're debating on attaching an energy to the active. Jet energy goes on to the active weird ear V. And things are passed back over to our passed over to our ancient player. Oh no. Not the end of the world because Double Archaeops Ultra Ball can be found next turn. Our ancient player plays Earthen Vessel, discarding a card to search the deck for two basic energy. Another Earthen Vessel is played, discarding one of those fighting energies to search the deck for two darkness energy. Three darkness energy in hand, currently, I believe. But more importantly, three ancient cards in the discard pile. Roaring Moon, of course, does more damage based off of how many ancient tag cards are in the discard pile. So both of our players are actually kind of playing this mini game of I need to get certain cards into the discard pile in order to do good stuff. Radiant Greninja has the concealed cards ability, discard an energy card, draw two cards. We just saw that there. A Nest Ball is found and played. That nest ball allows the player to search the deck for a basic Pokemon to add to the bench. Another Roaring Moon found and put into play here. So far so good for our ancient player. They definitely have an energy attachment for a turn, but not before laying down and playing the Pokestop. Discard the top three cards of the deck, and then you may put any item cards discarded in, in that way into your hand. No item cards found there, but a couple more ancient cards at least one found and added to this card pile energy attached to the active roaring moon for turn and play is passed back over to our Lugia player they instantly play a Jacques as a supporter for turn that supporter allows them to search their deck for up to two evolution Pokemon to add to their hand so if there is an ultra ball in hand double Archaeops would be perfect to grab off of this Jacques we see a Lugia V-Star and a single Archaeops actually found off of the Jock, however. Lugia V-Star evolves on the bench. Ultra Ball discards the double Archaeops that were already in hand, or at least one of them were. In order to search the deck for an attacker, because we got the double Archaeops, we got the Lugia V-Star. Super effective summoning star incoming. We give V Star, of course, has the V Star power ability. Summoning Star during your turn, you may put up to two colorless Pokemon that don't have a rule box from your discard pile onto your bench. Summoning those double Archaeops, each with the Primal Turbo ability, allowing that player to accelerate special energy cards from the deck. When our player is resolving the Ultra Ball here, I think you do grab something in order to thin the deck of that card. Lots of valid targets here. Something like a Luminion could be grabbed and just held in the hand for future turns if needed. If that Luminous Sign ability is needed to search out supporter cards. Iron Hands or Blood Moon Ursa Luna are fine attackers 
as well and going to settle for that Iron Hands EX with the feared amp you very much attack 120 damage and if a Pokemon was knocked out by Ampu very much, an additional prize card can be taken from that knockout. Iron Hands is established on the board here. Summoning Star flips that V-Star marker to bring the double Archeops onto the bench. And I'm sure we're going to start seeing Special Energy being accelerated out of the deck with that Primal Turbo ability. Search your deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon. So let's see who the attacker is going to be for this turn. Double Turbo and Gift attached to that active Weird Ear V, so looks like we're going in with that. Second Primal Turbo being resolved here. Mist Energy and Gift Energy attached to the bench Arceus V Star. Weird Ear V has the Scythe Shield Bash attack 40 times. This attack does 40 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. 140 damage that Weird Ear V is currently doing. A perfect amount of damage in order to KO the opposing 140 HP Roaring Moon. Anything else going to happen before the attack? Yeah, we're debating on playing a card from hand, attaching an energy, V-Guard energy, to the bench Lugia V-Star, and Scythe Shield Bash for the knockout. Roaring Moon flies into the active spot to take the place of its fallen brethren, and play resumes over on its side as a backup Roaring Moon is put onto the bench. Pokestop now being spun here. Three hits off of that Pokestop. Next is Professor Sada's Vitality. That supporter card allows the player to accelerate a basic energy to two of the ancient Pokemon in play and then draw three cards. Darkness Energy being attached to each of the Roaring Moon off of that Professor Sada's Vitality. Seven ancient cards in the discard pile currently it seems. The Roaring Moon has the Vengeance Fletchling attack, of course. Um, this attack does... Alright, it's the Vengeance Fletchling, 70 plus. This attack does 10 more damage for each Ancient card in the discard pile. 140 is what it's swinging for currently. Ancient Booster Energy Capsule attached to that Roaring Moon, giving it plus 60 HP. 200 HP single prize in the active spot now as an Ultra Ball is played discarding a couple more ancient cards into the discard pile to search the deck for a Pokemon another Roaring Moon. You usually do want to just get those out onto the board as soon as possible as those are your attackers. It's easier to stream them that way. Aha! The counter catcher is live here since the opponent has fewer prize cards remaining. Counter Catcher, so long as that condition is met, acts like a boss's orders, bringing up a Pokemon from the bench into the active spot, and that Archeops is getting targeted here. And KO'd with Vengeance Fletchling, reducing the energy acceleration for the rest of the game for our Lugia player. Weird Ear V moves back into the active spot, and play resumes over on the Lugia side, as they're consulting their opponent's discard pile. Knowledge is power as they download as much data as they can in order to better inform their decisions on their turn. Double turbo energy attached from hand to the weird ear. Our players are calculating the damage here. I'll do it at the very end where it matters. So that way I can continue commentating for you lovely listeners. Primal Turbo now being used. To search the deck for a couple of energy cards to accelerate onto the board. I think they go onto the Iron Hands. Yep. 
since the weird ear has a lot of energy, the Lugia has a lot of energy, so now you power up your other attacker that's in play that you searched out as jet energy and gift energy get accelerated onto that Iron Hands EX. 120 is not enough to KO a Roaring Moon, but the uh, Iron Hands EX does have the other attack that does 160 damage that can KO a non-capsuled Roaring Moon as Weird Ear V attacks and takes the KO. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Two hundred damage exactly with my quick calculator in my pocket at all time math. Just enough to take the KO on that capsule Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon flies into the active spot. Another Roaring Moon hits the bench as our ancient player begins their turn. Eleven car ancient cards in the discard pile now. So Pokey stop first, discarding the top three. A couple more ancient cards hit the discard pile now. Thirteen and, and a lost vacuum added to hand. Next is Professor Sala's Vitality to accelerate some energy. Two ancient Pokemon in play and draw three cards. Radiant Greninja discards an energy and draws two more cards with its concealed cards ability. Dark Patch now being played to accelerate a Darkness Energy from the discard pile to a Bench Darkness Pokemon. Two hundred damage currently being done by Vengeance Fletchling. Let's do our Ancient Cart now at two hundred ten. And Weird Ear has 220 HP, but luckily there is a superior energy retrieval in hand in order to discard the last needed ancient card. Superior energy retrieval, discard two cards and then put from the discard pile to your hand up to four basic energy cards. Darkness and Fighting put back into the hand there, but most importantly, getting that last ancient card into the discard pile to do 220 damage with Vengeance Fletchling to KO the opposing Weird Ear V. Lugia V-Star flies into the active spot and play resumes over on its side. The KO is there, but what is the prize map here? Oh, actually, um, that uh, Weird Ear V did have a gift energy attached to it, so our players, good on our players for catching that before the new active Pokemon is promoted. You resolve Gift Energy, and Gift Energy says when this Pokemon is knocked out that it's attached to, draw up to seven cards in hand. So we saw the Gift Energy resolve there. Iron Hands actually levitates into the active spot. Now that things are all squared away, play resumes on Lugia's side. Jet Energy attached from hand onto that Lugia V-Star. That Jet Energy brings that Pokemon into the active spot. Tempest Dive is currently doing 220 damage. Mesa Goza is the counter stadium that's put into play now, followed by an Iono. That supporter has both players shuffle their hands, put them at the bottom of their deck, and then each player draws from the top of their, their deck cards equal to their remaining prize cards. Four and three here. Next is Great Ball, taking a look at the top seven cards of the deck and adding a Pokemon they find there to their hand. Shuffle the rest of the cards back into the deck. Now even with the Iono Disruption, lucky for our Ancient player, they have a ba backup attacker ready to go. As Radiant Charizard is found off of that Great Ball and added to the hand. Next is Mesagoza. Flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for a Pokemon to add to your hand. Heads is flipped, so our Lugia player is inspecting their deck for a target. The best target, if you will. And 
they are gonna go for that Blood Moon Ursaluna EX. It's massive, 260 HP and powerful Blood Moon attack, as well as season skill ability. All around good stats for this card here. We'll get into the details as needed as a Primal Turbo is being used here to accelerate a double turbo energy and gift energy on to that bench Blood Moon Ursaluna. Even though there is only one Archaeops in play, we are seeing no lack of energy cards in play in this mid game. The KO is there. Anything else to do before that? Tempest Dive for Knockout. The stadium will be discarded there as the effect of that attack. Roaring Moon into the active spot. Radiant Greninja uses its concealed card's ability to discard an energy and draw two cards. We need to see ro more Roaring Moon. At least an energy attachment to that Roaring Moon as well would be nice. Are they all in the discard pile? I know at least three are. We're getting an ancient count here. Sixteen, I think it is. Sixteen ancient cards in the discard pile. Boss's orders brings up that Iron Hands, EX, and Vengeance Fletchling takes the KO on it leaving our ancient player with just one prize card remaining here in this now late game as Lugia V-Star moves into the active spot and play resumes over on its side as a capturing aroma is played. Flip a coin. If Tails, search your deck for a basic Pokemon. That Luminion V is found and put onto the bench activating its Luminous Sign ability to search the deck for a supporter card and that supporter of choice, of course, will be the disruptive. Who's a what's it? I don't know. So will this I don't know cause enough disruption to the opponent in order to slow them down and miss out on taking that last prize card on their next turn? Meanwhile, the Lugia player has to take three prize cards. One prize card at a time with no multi-prize Pokemon in play on their opponent's side. That Radiant Charizard put into play, Mist Energy attached to it, and Tempest Dive for the knockout. Now I'm actually going to think twice about benching that Radiant Charizard and going to go for the Iono. I got too excited for that attack there, apparently. You guys remember what Iono does. Both players shuffle their hands, put them at the bottom of their deck, and then they each get draw uh, prize cards remaining equal to their remaining prize cards. Our Ancient player gets one card here. Our Lugia player got three. Now Tempest Dive for the knockout. Greninja in the active spot. Oh my gosh, and the Nest Ball is found. Nespa is going to let that ancient player look through their deck and put a, oh my gosh, a flutter main into play as well as another flutter main. Ugh. No cards in hand for our ancient player, and it, as it looks like they have run out of steam here along with the double Iono disruption. These things are just passed back over to our Lugia player. Lugia sweep. Our ancient player is living off a top deck. That was good for them to play those couple of um, nest balls in order to thin the deck to make their top decks that much sweeter, but they need a lot. Energy for concealed cards to get into a Roaring Moon and a Professor Sada's. Yeah. Either way, our players are going to play to all their outs in order to close out this final round. The guaranteed, guaranteed knockout is on board here, and it is taken. Tempest Dive knocks out Greninja, Pokestop, <laughs> top deck. All right, it's got to be good. Pokestop 
what are they even looking for? We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, okay. Pokepot or Pokestop discards a uh, explores guidance, finds a uh, Poke Gear 3.0 and a Pow Pad. I guess you play the Pow Pad. Yeah, to get the double sodas back in the deck. So you're more likely to find it off of this, but you you really need a Roaring Moon. There may even be enough ancient cards in the discard pile to take the one shot on the Lugia, but just depends on the count. All right, we're hoping for the most up-to-date Pokegear 3.0 here. Looking at the top seven cards, Professor Sada is found there and added to the hand. But again, we need a Roaring Moon in play, so that way it can get accelerated too with the Sadas and be able to attack and potentially close out the game. Professor Sadas accelerates energy, draws three cards. <laughs> All the Sadas found. No attack on our ancient player's side. They pass things back over to our Lugia player, and I suspect they will not forget to attack for game. What a sweet tournament we had this night. What do you guys think of this video and the commentary? Please leave feedback in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Professor's Lab. Thank you.